Hello everyone, today we're gonna take a look at a hilarious video out of California, which I pulled off Van Bayon 2, which has a sovereign citizen who, sadly, looks like he was living out of his vehicle, but the vehicle had an expired registration, so he has an encounter with a California police officer who is really just on the spot and kind of funny himself when he refers to the sovereign citizen's shenanigans. This sovereign citizen cites the right to travel and says that he can drive without a registration because he is not in commerce. I'm going to take a look at where the sovereign citizens get that idea from, show you some of the sources of the fake law, then we're going to look at the California penal code that this sovereign citizen violated. Thank you everyone for joining me. I'm Joe Pometto, Joe the Lawyer. This is Common Sense Academy. If you like my content, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. I'm trying to get to 10,000 subscribers. Please go ahead and subscribe. Here on this channel, we take a look at Sovereign Citizens First Amendment auditors and exactly what the law says about them and their own versions of fake law. Now before we begin, before we dig in, many of you came here for the same time sip. All right, raise your cup, your glass in the air. I have here Dunkin' Donuts coffee. No Raiders cups out there, but okay, okay, I'll make an exception this once. It tastes better when we sip together. Cheers. Okay, let's watch this video. Okay. What's that? We're good, yeah, are you okay? What's that? We're good. Yeah, are you okay? Okay, yeah. sir, I see you have a, a body cam. I, I have the right to record you also. Of course you do. Yes, my name is Officer Reed from the Monterey Police Department. Ashton Bet. 301. Sergeant Rubosh is on his way to talk to you. Thank you, sir. I just, uh, I'm... Thank you recording. I'll make sure to repeat this. The registration on this vehicle expired in February of 2019. Okay. Was a year and two months ago. I asked you how much it was to renew it, and you said you didn't know that the last time you paid for it was about 175 bucks. And the impression I'm getting is that it's not a priority. To you. Correct. You also told me that you feel you do not need registration or a driver's license because you're not driving the vehicle. I'm, 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 I'm not. Since this vehicle is parked on a public roadway and the registration has expired more than six months, under the California Vehicle Code, it should be towed. Yeah. I'm trying to work something out with you. Yes, I understand. I asked you to produce your identification, and you refused. And because, to well, correct? Correct. Okay. That's all correct, Officer okay. Reed. And for the record, why I say that I don't need to show ID is because I, I haven't done any crime. I'm not suspected of doing any crime. Your registration has expired, and like I explained to you before you started recording, but it's captured on my body cam. I know, I understand. To confirm that you Correct. are the registered owner of the vehicle. Correct, sir. Correct, and you are refusing to provide your yeah, identification sir. for me to do that. So we can just wait for the sergeant to get here, and he's going to tell you the same thing. But that's okay. I, I'm that's just, but this, um, what, what I'm doing, sir, is I, I am practicing a right. There's a right that I can travel and not drive. I'm not making any money behind this wheel. I have my family in here. This is our home. We live in and out of this. We do rent motel rooms. Travel in a vehicle that's registered in the state of California with expired registration. It does not work like that. As a constitutional right, it does work that way. As long as I'm not commerce, I'm not getting paid to move this automobile. I I don't need to have a registration. Unfortunately, you do, but. That's okay. The sergeant can tell you the same thing, sir. That's fine. Okay. Your name and badge number? Officer Perez, 114. Thank you, Ms. Perez. So n neither one of you understand what the right is of traveling? Never heard of that? Yes, I have. You have? And it's what you stand against in the state of California, sir. You are required to have this thing registered, and you are required to have a driver's license issued by any state in the continental United States. Now, you're yeah. choosing to not do that, and okay, but just so you're aware, the state of California <clears throat> says this vehicle shall be towed because the registration has expired over six months, and it's parked on a public roadway. Okay? Okay. 
22651, subsection O, subsection 1, subsection A of the California Vehicle Code. If you want to look that up, go ahead. If not, that's okay. It's for your record. Got it? So what was the reason uh, you came to speak to me? You said you stopped me. I wasn't moving. I was just sitting here. The reason I came to talk to you is because the registration on your truck has expired over a year. Okay. Right? Even not displaying your current tax is something you can be stopped for under the California Vehicle Code. Okay. Okay? So not only are you not displaying current tabs, your registration's expired over a year. That's more than enough reason to be able to stop you and force you to identify yourself. If you don't want to do that, okay, I'm just advising you, the sergeant's going to tell you the same thing, and you are opening yourself up to detention and or arrest for failing to cooperate. Just advising you so you have time to think about that before he gets here. So by me uh, giving you ID and showing you the uh, registration, was that solved? I mean, it's still not registered. Okay, did you hear the part where I said that I was going to try and put you in touch with members of our community action team, the multidisciplinary outreach team, people who come up with solutions to help people in need, such as what you're telling me that the four of you are inside this vehicle, right? Living out of this vehicle, need the vehicle to be registered. I can't do that unless I know who you are. Hello. Hi, Sergeant. How are you, sir? Good. What is your name and badge number? Rubash. Rubash? Zero one. Yes. Okay. You're Sergeant of Monterey PD? Yes. Okay. Uh, my family and I are just sitting here lunching. They had to use the restroom, so I drove down here. It's the only place open to public to use the restroom. Okay. This officer here uh, supposedly said he pulled me over. I, I wasn't moving. I was parked here. But uh, he says because my... First of all, I have to say... I really enjoyed this cop's demeanor and his professionalism. First of all, he's kind of smiling through the interaction, taking, I don't know if I would call it lighthearted, but a lighthearted and professional approach to this. Uh, when the sovereign citizen begins to record the officer, he, he says to him, uh, well, now that you're recording, I'm going to go ahead and repeat everything that I just said to you. And he laid out exactly why he was doing what he was doing, what the law was, why they were investigating, et cetera, et cetera. I thought that's a great way to deal with it for officers. Whenever somebody goes and starts recording, especially these sovereign citizens, go ahead, give them a quick recap so that they don't miss anything on the recording at all. Uh, this officer, he also knew his laws, like boom, 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 knew exactly what he was doing. Really, this is the kind of status I think that all officers should strive for, to be able to approach something uh, professionally, but not too seriously, unless the situation calls for it, and to know and cite the law, boom, boom, boom. Uh, I will say, I feel a little bit bad for this guy. He talked about the fact that he lives in his car um, so there's, I do have some sympathy there for this gentleman, but the laws are still the law and the officer still has to enforce the law and do his job. And he spoke about, you know, finding some services for this guy to help him out, something he didn't really seem interested in. But, you know, the police aren't just arresting and dumping this individual. I, I, I don't know, you know, this is out in California. 
um, you know, they're looking to get them some help. That's why he needs your name. And this guy's going all sovereign citizen, not cooperating at all. Um, it appears he had no registration and or driver's license. Okay. And, uh, if a car is, is, is parked in that in on the public roads for longer than six months, it should be towed according to the California code. Uh, this sovereign citizen states, I'm practicing my right to travel. He says to the officer, do you know what the right to travel is? And the officer says, yes, uh, I've heard of it. It's a bunch of shenanigans. Uh, pretty funny. Then the officer cited word for word, um, not word for word, but it would sound in a very intelligent way, the California Penal Code or the California Traffic Code that uh, says exactly why he was doing what he was doing. Again, this guy brings up the right to travel and says he's not traveling in commerce. Therefore, the right is absolute. Um, so I think what we're looking at here is registration expired, no driver's license, no ID given to the officer upon request. The officer stating with a, with a register, with a, uh, an expired driver's license, if the car is sitting there on the road, okay, for longer than six months, it should be towed. Uh, apparently, the last time it was registered was longer than six months ago, based on the officer's own research. He also stated that it was parked on the public roadways, and he cited code 22. 651 subsection O subsection 1 subsection A. So I went ahead and I looked that up. So we're going to take a look at the right to travel. I want to show you some of the source that sovereign citizens rely on. It's total BS, but we're going to look at the right to travel and then we're going to take a look at the actual law that the officer cites in this situation. So what we are looking at here is a section of my new book on sovereign citizens where I discuss driving versus traveling versus conveying. Before I get into the text itself, it's important to know that sovereign citizens pull this fake right to travel from all sorts of different sources. So you could go on the internet and probably find a hundred different ways in which they justify the right to travel. All of it is nonsense. All of it is fake. All of it is incorrect legal interpretation. What I have here is just one argument that the sovereigns use to justify the right to travel. So the first sentence here, this goes hand in hand with the sovereign citizen interpretation of 18 U.S.C. 31. Again, they interpret 18 U.S.C. 31 as defining an automobile as a commercial vehicle. Therefore, the sovereign concludes that they are only driving if they are in an automobile for commerce. Before I read the rest, it's important to know 18 U.S.C. 31 is a section of the Federal Criminal Code which just defines certain words for uses in the law. In that very narrow section, which has procedural purposes only, they do talk about automobiles being commercial vehicles. All that is is a jurisdictional hook so that the law complies with the requirements of the Commerce Clause in the United States Constitution. It is strictly procedural and, uh, and again, it's a jurisdictional hook. It does nothing to impact a person's right to drive. Nothing. Uh, in actuality, a person's right to drive is decided almost entirely by the states. It is state law which governs a person's driving rights. So let's get into this. It says, this is bolstered, this use of 18 U.S.C. 31, is bolstered by the sovereign's use of definitions from a law dictionary published in 1914, Bouvier's Law Dictionary. In this arcane old and no longer used law book, to travel is defined as a fundament, fundamental right that cannot be stripped of someone. Further, this same law book states that a traveler is one who uses a conveyance to go from one place to another and includes all those who use the highways as a matter of right. So traveling and conveying are one and the same. That's why you will hear the sovereigns cite that, okay? Whereas Bouvier's Law Dictionary then defines the term driver as one employed in conducting a coach, carriage, wagon, or other vehicle. Thus, the sovereign concludes 
that driving, at least in the context of this law dictionary, is different from traveling because it requires one be employed and employed implies a commercial adventure. This commercial aspect is then reinforced by their incorrect reading of 18 U.S.C. 31. Thus, the final conclusions are that traveling and conveying, even in an automobile, are fundamental rights guaranteed under the law and that driving is only driving when done for commerce. As I explained previously in the book, let's look at the last paragraph here, the interpretation of 18 U.S.C. 31 is wrong. All that is is a jurisdictional hook. But the reliance on an obscure law dictionary published over 100 years ago is nuts. First, law dictionaries do not, under any circumstances, now or ever, carry the force of law. I repeat, they are not law. Law is found in statutes passed by legislatures and in well-established common law rulings from legitimate courts. A law dictionary, even Black's Law Dictionary, which is still used, never provides binding law. And one published over 100 years ago is only useful as a historical artifact for the history of law. As almost all phrases and terms in something that old are likely dated, irrelevant, and meaningless. The last edition of Bouvier's Law Dictionary was published, it appears to me, in 1914. Thus, you can see from the Sovereign's incorrect reading of the Federal Code coupled with this 100-year-old law dictionary, they come up with this right to travel and the understanding that the right that a vehicle is only under the jurisdiction of the police if it is used in commerce. It has to do with the sovereign saying that they are traveling, not driving, and that driving is only a commercial activity. However, remember the sources of this law. Number one, it is completely cherry-picked, so it's not read in conjunction with all the other laws that exist. The sovereign citizens are basically just ignoring state laws or state jurisdiction, which is allowed under the United States and all state constitutions. Instead, they're relying on a law dictionary from 1914 in an obscure part of the federal criminal code to say that driving is only driving and only can be regulated by the state or the government when it's done for commercial purposes. This is blatantly incorrect. Whether you're driving for commercial purposes, for personal purposes, in an emergency, you are under the jurisdiction of the state and federal law. Now let's take a look at that law that this officer was citing in the video. The police officer in the video cited 22651 of the California Traffic Code, subsection 0, subsection 1, subsection A. You can see uh, it is Article 1 up at the top here, Authority to Remove Vehicles. 22651, a peace officer as defined in Chapter 4.5 of Title 3 of Part 2 of the Penal Code or a regularly employed and salaried employee who is engaged in directing traffic or enforcing parking laws and regulations of a city, county, or jurisdiction of a state agency in which a vehicle is located may remove a vehicle located within the territorial limits in which the officer or employee may act under the following circumstances. Before we jump to the bottom section, a lot of that earlier language just allows for individuals who are not necessarily police officers, such as security officers, uh, traffic enforcement employees. They can also sometimes enforce the law if granted that power under their jurisdiction. And the language of this law allows that those individuals can also issue tickets and citations. So let's look down at the bottom here, O1. If a vehicle is found or operated upon a highway, public land, or an off-street parking facility under any of the following circumstances, subsection A, with a registration expiration date in excess of six months before the date it is found or operated on the highway, public lands, or the off-street parking facility. This is the 
section of the code that the officer was citing and it looks like he was he was totally correct that section of the code allows the officer to tow or remove a vehicle if the registration has been expired for more than six months and that's exactly what he was talking about with the sovereign citizen in this video one interesting point is that it has to be on public lands okay and that's laid out in the statute and the officer said that in the video as well if you have a car with an expired registration on your own property in a place that it's allowed to be they can't come and remove it so you can keep a vehicle that you own on your property with those registration violations now there actually are some jurisdictions that don't allow you to have those vehicles in plain view or in your parking spot in front of your house or even right on your parking pad. So you may have to put it in a garage or out of view, just an FYI. Um, one other thing that the officer cited here was, uh, you know, that this individual, I believe he stated that he refused to sign the citation. He refused to identify himself. As I've covered in past videos, if people will not sign a citation, some states have laws where it is an additional crime if you refuse to sign and it is an arrestable offense. I'm not exactly sure if that was going on here, but he would not even identify himself. I believe there's a good chance that this guy got hauled away in handcuffs, even though we didn't see the rest of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed everything that we covered today. This was an amusing video with an officer who really knew the law, was very pro professional, and was kind of funny when he said the sovereign citizen was up to shenanigans. I showed you an example of how sovereign citizens cherry pick the law to mean what they want it to mean. They cite a federal code that only has definitions, okay, and is basically just used to give the court jurisdiction, okay? And it does so within the limits of the Constitution itself. They also then cite a law dictionary from 1914, which is no longer in effect, but which does not carry the power of law anyway. On top of that, their interpretation of the language in there to say that, that you're only driving if you're traveling for commerce is just incorrect and cherry-picked. We took a look at the California Penal Code, which allows law enforcement to tow someone, okay, if they have a registration that has been expired for six months. That's what this officer was acting on. I hope you enjoyed the Common Sense Academy, got some laughs out of this, also learned something at the same time. If you like my content on sovereign citizens and the law, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. Also sign up for my email list. You'll get a free PDF on history and exam of the sovereign citizen movement done by yours truly. Thank you. Common Sense Academy out.